My darling wife Nancy and I just spent a splendid week on Lake Skinny Atlas in the Finger Lakes in upstate New York. We had a lot of fun and adventures, but nothing prepared us for what we encountered on our last day up there. The village of Skinny Atlas is on the northern tip of a 16 mile long lake. And if you look at the spelling of the town's name, you might think it should be pronounced Scanny Adelies, but you'd be wrong. Hi. Do you like living here in Scanny Adelies? How do you pronounce the name of this town? It's Skinny Atlas. How do you say it? Skinny Atlas. Not Skinny Atlas? No, not Skinny Atlas. Skinny Atlas. Skinny Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just wanted to verify. In 1881, some guy built the first lake house, but his friends all thought he was nuts. The lake is now surrounded by houses and cottages, some owned by various one percenters. Bill and Hill Clinton vacationed here. It's a wealthy enough community to support two polo teams. But as you drive up the hills surrounding the lake, you very quickly get into a sparsely populated area of farmland and forests. Family farmers have taken a hit from corporate agriculture, and those who still try to make a go of it are most certainly not in the 1%. Nancy and I decided to have a look around up there. With the GPS, I figured we could wander aimlessly and not get lost. It was beautiful. Stands of trees, rolling hills, views of the lake, azure sky. We rambled on and on a whim, I turned onto a country lane called Ibert Road. The sight we were presented with took our breath away. I am cowardly but foolish. Nancy is pragmatic and wary. So when I screeched to a stop and started filming this art, Nancy spotted a bunch of no trespassing signs that put her into an anxious state. John, let's get out of here before somebody comes after us with a shotgun. I was far too taken by what I was seeing to listen, and fortunately my foolishness paid off. A woman soon arrived, and she was the wife of the creator of this incredible art installation. And he was always looking for a new style and a new technique, always very innovative. He makes these cuff bracelets, and so every Christmas, every birthday, every Mother's Day, I get another bracelet, another invention. He has a lot to say. He should write a book. Is he around? Um, I'm just coming back from errands, and I believe he is. Her name is Betsy, and her husband, Robert Ibert, an imposing figure with a beard and piercing blue eyes, turned out to be an extremely likable guy who allowed me to film his work, but was very reticent to appear on camera. Robert has lived on his farm all his life. It became so hard to make a living that he began driving trucks for money and eventually became a nurse and worked at a local hospital emergency room for years. As he drove back from work late one night, he fell asleep, crashed, and suffered a severe concussion. He told me that his art installation is a work in progress and has a long way to go. There's a quality about it that is strikingly ominous, and it turns out that's no accident. Robert explained that each sculpture references a specific event of criminal activity. Arson. Drug dealing. An animal murder that has occurred to his farm over the years. It's the story of good and evil, 
and so far he has spent a lot more time on the evil side. And yet the Christian flag flying from Jacob's ladder and a dove sculpted from a farm implement shows how good will make a comeback. He really could write a book. In great art, feeling is expressed regardless of whether the details of the iconography is fully understood. Flemish art has all sorts of symbols. A snuff candle can be the Holy Ghost, and yet you don't need to understand this to feel the human meaning of the art. Has any art gallery or museum ever encountered this stuff? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a category called outsider art. It refers to artists who lack formal training, but are often visionary and highly creative individuals. I asked Robert if he ever heard of this. He hadn't. To me, it's almost a meaningless distinction. If an outsider artist is someone who has not received formal training and is driven to do what he does through an unstoppable compulsion to express what's in him, then I guess I'm an outsider filmmaker. What's important is that the art is good, and to me, what Robert Ibert is doing is very, very good. I love the formal power of his work, its complexities and symmetries, the extremely creative use of materials. He told me he dragged dead locust tree trunks across his farm and planted them several feet deep to become the armatures for his sculptures. uses altered text and code as a decorative talisman to ward off evil. A, B, O, M, per, D, so it's... Yeah, abstract, omnipresent, perpetrated demonism. This lettering on the silo is upside down and backwards and skips every other letter of the word it represents. Spontaneous combustion, my ass, refers to the alleged cause of one arson attack. I hope to return to Skinny Atlas someday, maybe this fall, and see how his work is progressing. I am so glad I met Robert Ibert. It must be fate that a filmmaker obsessed with art got to cross paths with an artistic spirit as uniquely beautiful as Robert Ibert. There's more to life than you know, what you see.